Hello, everybody. Let's take a look at the annotation feature within Zoom. This is a great way to emphasize what you're trying to share with students and also to allow them to interact with the material. So begin by The annotation feature becomes available as soon as you start sharing a screen. You won't be able to find it before that. So let's say I'm sharing a lesson with my students on 3-9 science, and the electron orbiting an atom. So I could be trying to emphasize something in this lesson and I want to draw on my screen. So I can find those controls by going up to the top. So in the screen sharing mode, I go up and touch the green bar at the top that brings down the controls. And now I choose annotate. So this brings up the annotation bar and I can move this around the screen just in case there's a more convenient location for it. And so as I'm talking, I might want to draw a few more arrows and explain what's going on here. I can choose text. That will appear for the students. Now, when you're using the annotation features, you can't interact with your PowerPoint slide anymore. So to do that, I have to hit X to make that disappear. I have to click back on the screen. That brings up the controls to the PowerPoint again. And now I can advance the slides and continue my presentation. Now, if I go to a totally different slide, you'll notice that my annotations are still there. The annotations are attached to the Zoom window itself. So to get rid of those, I have to go back to that annotation control bar. And this is the, the control that I should have used before. It looks like the trash can. And so you select clear and clear all drawings. Now it's possible for students to make annotations to your drawings as well. And so you need to make sure you want that to happen. So over at the top, under the more option, there is control for that. So you can disable annotation for others. So if you don't want students vandalizing your screen, then you can select that option. And now they can't. So I'm going to turn that back on because this is a feature we want to explore. Now, there's another way to share your screen and help students participate. And that is by using the whiteboard feature. So if you select that, it just brings up a blank white screen. And now you are able to draw on it and you can have your students draw on this screen as well. Now, here's one of the tricks with Zoom. The controls for the, the way to find the controls for participants in your meeting is different from what I just showed you. And so if you explain that to your students, they will be confused on how to find the annotation features. So what you need to do is show them how this works from their perspective. So you can give them clear instructions on what to do. In order to show you that, what I'm going to do is this. So I'm stopping the sharing and I'm hoping you're noticing that I have logged into this meeting a second time and I've relabeled myself as student. So I'm going to use this to show you what things look like in Zoom from the student perspective. To show you what things look like from the student perspective, I have to change the controls on this. So take a look at my participants list here. It shows me as the host. So what I'm going to do, and you shouldn't do this in a regular classroom, is transfer the host controls over to this other version of me that I've labeled as student. So that student will get full control over Zoom and I will have none. So this, so I'll go to that student here, select more, and I will say, make this student a host. It, this is generally bad news. So don't try this with actual students unless you want complete chaos. So I'm going to transfer the host privileges to that student. And now what you'll notice is that for me, I'm no longer labeled as the host and I'm just a participant. The student will have all the controls and you'll notice that my controls here have disappeared. So now I'm going to go to my other computer right over here in my powerful student persona, and I will share the whiteboard. Okay, so now I am a participant at this meeting. I'm no longer the host. And if I look at the screen that's being shared with me, I see different controls at the top. It says you are viewing students screen. 
and then it has a drop down menu view options. So this is where students will find the controls for the annotation feature. And unless you explain this to them carefully, they will be very confused because they will be looking for controls down at the bottom of the screen, which is where they are used to finding them as a participant. So I go to the view options, I select annotate, and now I have the same annotation controls as what you saw before. So I can draw, I can add text and so on. And if I clear, luckily, I'm only clearing my own work and not the work of the teacher or the rest of the class. So that type of clearing power lies with the person who's controlling the meeting. So that's a quick look at the annotation features, and I hope you find that they help increase the level of interactivity with your lessons.